Hello everyone, we are starting into lesson six, looking at the normal distribution. This is Mrs. Rossin here to talk to you guys about this. And I've got my little co-teacher next to me, Isaac. You say hello? He's waving, I don't think he realizes this is not a video. So we're talking about the normal distribution, which I think as we start getting into this, you guys will see, um, it does seem familiar to you. You've heard it before, but we'll go into some more details as we talk about this. So first, here's a, just a reminder of the visual. So it is this normal curve, that shape that you guys see. So that's always what we'll look at with the normal distribution of this bell curve shape. It is symmetrical, as you can see. So almost everything falls into the normal distribution, and even if it doesn't, we can at least use the normal distribution to help us estimate values, which we'll talk about more as we go into the next lesson as well. So we see so many things follow this, so that's why we use the word normal. And like I mentioned, we can kind of fake it if it's normal enough to help us out. So the probability, we view that as the area that you guys see in yellow under the curve. This will come up if any of you go into calculus in the future, you'll use the sort of concept of area underneath something. And think about total probability always equals one or 100% if you are underneath that entire curve. So if you're looking under a single point though, we have zero probability of just getting any one specific number. So that's why we look at ranges of numbers and even if they're narrow ranges, that's okay. But we're gonna look into how we view those ranges. All right, so first, the characteristics of the normal distribution. So however you guys are taking notes, um, this may be a good screen to pause and write this down, take a screenshot, take a picture, whatever you're doing throughout this time to help you make sense of everything. So first, you guys will notice that this middle point is the mean. So notice it is highest at the mean, and it's symmetrical around the mean. It's tallest at the mean, just like I mentioned. And then standard deviation, how we've been working with in the past couple lessons, that tells you how um, wide or narrow your curve is going to be. So we'll look at that in these next couple of screens. All of these percentages we'll also talk about a little bit more in the next coming slides, but those would be good percentages to write down or pause and write that down to have them. Okay, so first, before we get into the percentages some more, as you guys look at these, this is really, really important to notice the difference. That your first couple questions on your assignment for this lesson will be just like this slide. So remember, they are highest at their mean. So you can see, I'm do a little tracing here, along this spot here, just pretend my line is straight, um, notice how this point, that would be your mean, this would be your mean, and this would be your mean for the red, green, and blue. Even though the red is highest, notice how when you look down, this number is the same. So that's the same there. So remember that you're looking from left to right along here for your numbers. So that means all of these have the same mean. So the largest mean would be the red, green, and blue, because they all have the same. And then notice your smallest mean would be this purple here, because again, you're not going by how high it is, you're going by the point down here. So that's a lower number here to be uh, purple compared to the numbers that we saw. Then your standard deviations, so that's where you're looking at how spread out they are. 
So notice how the red, if you can still see it amongst my scribbles, the red is your most narrow shape. So that means the red would have the least or the lowest standard deviation because it's not very spread out. Then as you continue to look at it, notice the purple is starting to spread out a little bit more. So the purple would be next. Then your green starting to spread out even more. And then lastly, the biggest standard deviation would be the blue since it is spread out the most. And I'll go to the next slide where we have that written nicely. So again, you guys can pause it here if you want to be jotting that down or checking if you were trying it on your own. Again, the main thing to note is do not go by how high or low they are to find the mean. Specifically go by left to right. Obviously you're looking at the highest point to find the mean, but remember you're looking down here for the actual number. So that's why red, blue, and green all have the same mean. All right, so now getting into the other portion of this lesson, this is where we'll look at those percentages a little bit more. So this will help us with estimating probabilities and percentages. We'll talk about this more in the next lesson too. So this is going to connect as everything is pretty much connecting. So um, we always will use this empirical rule as long as something is normally distributed. It's always going to have that same shape. Okay, so here's another slide where it would be helpful to pause and write this down, screenshot or take a picture, because you will use this for pretty much the entire rest of your assignment for this lesson with these percentages. So you kind of already had those same numbers from a previous slide, but just notice here, especially circle here, the 68%, 95%, and then 99.7%, we'll use those a lot. So as you guys can see, so you have your mean, if you go one standard deviation out either direction, then you can notice that range from low to high is a total of 68%. Then notice you just go one more standard deviation out in both directions. Now we have a whole range of 95% of the data. And then lastly, if you go three standard, standard deviations to the right or the left, then you have 99.7% of the data. And we're gonna do some examples. So if this is seeming kind of confusing to you, we'll look at how this works. So here again, just another visual reminder for you, if you wanna jot that down too. So where 68% of the data is one standard deviation from the mean, 95% is two standard deviations, <clears throat> and 99.7% is three standard deviations. Okay, so here we have an example where we're looking at the height of adult males in the U.S. So you guys can see the um, visual on the table, but I'm also going to draw the bell curve up here to give you that as well. All right, so if you're looking at the curve of it, we have our mean in the middle, so there's our 70. And if standard deviation is 4, then remember as you guys go up, so we're just adding 4, so that would get us up to 74. If you go down, that would get you down to 66 because we're subtracting four. You guys see that same thing in the table here. So there's your arrow. So notice the 66 inches up to 74 inches, that's your 68% of the data. Then, as you can see in your table, or if you want your visual, so go another four above, so we're at 78 up here for another four below, so we're at 62. So that's again where you guys see this second part. That's your range from 62 inches to 78 inches. That's 95% of males are within that range. Then lastly, we'll just go one more here. So 78 plus four brings us up to 82. 62 minus four 
brings us down to 58. And that's where you can see this third line here. So that's your 99.7% of the data is between 58 inches and 82 inches. All right, so just making sense of the data that we just talked about. A little repetitive here, but just helping you understand it. So we are saying that means there's a 68% chance, because remember how we're saying that probability, it's like that area underneath the curve. So 68% chance that a normally selected American male is between 66 and 74 inches. Or another way of thinking of it, about 68% of the entire population of American males is between those measurements. Remember, all of this is just an estimation, but that's why we're using the normal distribution to help us with that. And then because 68% is what we're looking at here, then picture 100 minus 68 gives you 32%. So 32% of American males are not within that range. All right, so here's just another example. Here's where if you guys want to pause it, you can try it out yourselves. And get a lot of your, the rest of your assignment questions will be using this sort of concept. So that's why this would be helpful for you to practice here, because then we're going to look at what the answers are. So if you've paused it and tried it out, then we're just going to be filling in these details. Again, remember, you are welcome instead of the table if you prefer to draw that curve, put your 65 right here, and then just go through adding three, so it brings you up to the 68, subtracting three brings you to 62, same numbers that you guys see in your table. So you can definitely keep using the visual of drawing the curve if that is easier for you. But then notice again, you're just going up three more and down three more to get your 95%. And then lastly, three more again, both directions, to get your 99.7%. Mommy. Yeah. Talking. We're talking about the normal distribution. Can you say normal distribution? I don't think Isaac is too impressed. All right, so we're almost done here. So um, we have that all filled out. So now we're just looking here, another way to help you interpret. We're, if we're looking at two standard deviations, then that's 95% of the data. So we'll fill in those blanks. If you guys wanna pause it and fill in what you would say, you can pause it here. All right, and then as we look to fill in all those blanks, here's what you guys should have said. So 95% chance that a randomly selected American woman is between 59 and 71 inches. Another way of wording it, about 95% of the population is between those measurements, so the same numbers. So then because we're looking at 95%, that leaves us with only 5% of American women are not in this range. Okay, um, so for any category, calculating the information regards to three standard deviations. So again, same sort of thing, you would just use the numbers from the three standard deviations there. All right, so these last three slides, this again will just help you with the very end of your assignment here. So we are looking at, is it hard to do that? <laughs> so as we're looking at this, um, we're looking at the lifespan of a specific type of watch. We have a mean of 21 months and then standard deviation of three months. All right, so first we're looking at what percentage of watches break down between 15 and 27 months? So again, if you guys are more of a visual person, you can draw that bell curve. You can put your 21 here. You can start using the standard deviations. So 21 plus three brings us to 24. 
Notice they want 15 to 27 months, so that means we want to go up one more. So 24 plus 3 brings us to 27. All right, let's just go down here. 21 minus 3 would be 18, and then 18 minus 3 would give us 15. So then you guys can see that's two standard deviations. So as we've talked about, that means that's even 95%. So I'll just keep going here so you guys can fill in those numbers. So the 95% two standard deviations. All right. So again, notice you guys will be using this um, in your assignment, this sort of concept. All right, so then as we just apply that concept, think about warranties and um, really when you buy all kinds of things, you're offered warranties or extended warranties. So um, it's kind of calculated so that very few customers will be able to use it. So we want to think about if the lifespan is normal and we know the mean and the standard deviation. Remember those percentages, as you guys can see. 0.15% um, fail before that point, around 2.5% fail before that spot there. So we're looking at really low numbers as we use this sort of concept. So if we're looking at um, the numbers that we've already worked with, notice how uh, the whole warranty concept, is they're being pretty stingy because if you go to standard deviations, that's 15 months, so then that means you only replace 2.5% of the watches. Also notice here, so anything outside of two standard deviations, we consider an outlier because that question, that word outlier, that'll come up also in your assignment. So think anything outside of the 95%, we consider an outlier. And remember, outlier is just, it's not part of the normal numbers. It's not within that um, close to the mean or within the majority of the numbers. So that's why we call it an outlier. So remember that curve again. They're the same on the other side of the curve as well. So think again, super stingy. So you go to your um, subtracting that amount, you're at 12 months. So they only replace 0.15% of the watches outside of the three standard deviation. So they really don't have to do much replacing based on that. All right, so you guys should be good with all of this information to look at your assignment for this lesson and have a great rest of your day. Bye.